dollars off of my stack. Today's lesson is going to come from Chapter 27, The Basic Tools of Finance. As you guys know, we've been looking through various parts of our economy, and as of late, we've really focused mostly on the financial sector. And I want to keep looking at the financial sector because this is like a really important part of the macro economy, and ultimately a really important part of this class. So Chapter 27, The Basic Tools of Finance, introduces us to a way that we can actually mathematically look at how our money can grow. Well, let's start off by just defining finance. Finance is a discipline that looks at how people can make money off of money or the various tools and instruments, financial instruments, that exist to allow us to do this. It's the field of study that looks at how people make decisions about their future relative to their income financial savings and investments, and ultimately how to prepare for a future point in their life where they may need to draw on some money or combat inflation or something of that nature. And it's a huge part of our society today. It's a, an extremely large part of our society and our economy. So there's some things we're going to be looking at as we go through this chapter, but uh, ultimately this chapter will show us how mathematically money and income can grow and a uh, ultimately attain larger amounts of in the future based on interest rates. All right, so let's say that one of your friends comes to you and says, I need to borrow $100. And you agree to lend them $100, right? You say, okay, I, I am willing to give you $100. It's not a problem. The thing is that I'm going to want some interest in the future, right? Like I'm going to want to make something off of this transaction. And so let's just say that you guys agree upon a 3% interest rate. In other words, that you agree that once this money is paid back, the original principal amount of the money, the $100, will be paid back, and in addition to the $100 will be a 3% return. Okay, so let's say that we have the $100 times 3%, and I know that in one year's time, when this loan matures, that this $100 principal at 3% interest will grow to be $103. So subsequently, out of this transaction, I've made $3 in interest. So based on this interest rate, the future value of this $100 in one year's time is $103. Said another way, if I was to look at this $103 one year from now, today it is actually worth $100. So I have here both the present value, the present value of a future sum and the future value of a present sum. And so what we're going to look at is some of the different formulas that allow us to see how this works, and then in addition to that, some of the various forms of interest as well. Okay, so let's return to the PowerPoint here, and I wanted to define a couple of things. First of all, future value. When we talk about the future value of a sum, it's essentially the money that you have today and what that sum can actually grow to in a future time period. And to understand that, we go back to our original example of the $100 borrowed. $100 today is the same thing to me as $103 in a year from now, so long as I earn that 3% interest. If I loan someone $100 and I get 3% on it, I know that in a year's time it's going to be worth to me a future value sum of $103. If I want to sort of reverse this process, I can look at a notion known as present value. And the present value is essentially what some future form of money is worth in its value today. Or that $103 that we loan to somebody, we know that $103 a year from now is worth $100 today, if that interest rate is 3%. Okay, so let's talk about various forms of interest and interest rates. First of all, we have a type of interest known as simple interest. And simple interest is calculated based on the principal amount only. The formula for simple interest is sort of simple. It is P times R times T, where the P stands for principal, the R stands for the rate, or the interest rate, and the T stands for the time. 
So the P, the principal, that's the original amount that you invest. The rate is the interest rate that you will earn on that money. And the T represents the time that you have invested in that money. Now simple interest is not the type of interest that you would prefer if you had your money in some sort of financial instrument. As a matter of fact, there's actually a better type of interest that grows not just arithmetically, but also it grows exponentially. And that type of interest rate is called compounding interest. Now the miracle of compounding interest is that not only does your principal amount grow, but also any future interest will grow as well. And this led Albert Einstein to say that compounding interest was the most powerful force in the universe. But compounding interest allows for both principal and interest to earn interest. So essentially the principal and any interest earned on that principal is now earning interest as well. Okay, so let's look at the formula for compounding interest. A little bit of algebra helps us to understand how this works. Here's the formula. The formula is the sum of a future value is equal to p times 1 plus the rate to the nth power. Again, the future value is equal to p times 1 plus r to the nth power. All right, so let's sort of dissect what each one of these things are. Again, the p is the principal. The r is the interest rate plus 1, which is a reflection of the principal times the interest rate, to the nth power, which is the number of times compounded. All right, so let's look at the difference between simple and compounding interest using a example here. Our first example here, we have the future value of $1,000 using simple interest. So here's our principal, here's our rate, here's our time. So we would, again, take this $1,000 thousand dollars multiply it by the rate which is 0.2 and then multiply it by the total amount of years okay so I'm gonna go ahead and come over here to my calculator and I'm gonna take the 1000 times 0.2 multiplied by the amount of time and I can see that the total interest earned on this account on this amount here would be two thousand dollars Okay, so I would have $2,000 in interest, $2,000, $2,000 in interest. So when I make this investment, I know that I will have earned, over the course of 10 years, $2,000. Okay, so now let's look at it from a perspective of compounding interest. Okay, so I've already got it set up here. I've got my principal, I've got my rate, plus one, and I've got my number of years. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up this calculator and show you how this works in terms of compounding interest. Okay, so you can plug this in as well. Uh, we have $1,000 again. We're going to multiply that times 1 plus the interest rate, which is 1.2. I've got to use my little exponent function to the 10th power or over those 10 years. So this investment of $1,000 at 20% interest over 10 years compounded amounts to $6,191.74. Now if I subtract the original amount from this, I can see that I've earned $5,191.74, which is substantially more than the $2,000 I earned with my simple interest investment. I would prefer compounding interest if I could invest in any particular financial asset. And here's our amounts again. We have our first amount which is the two thousand dollars in interest and the value of this asset being three thousand dollars. We have our second compounding interest, the future value of this amount being six thousand one hundred ninety one dollars and seventy four cents with a little over five thousand dollars in interest. You can see that a compounding interest loan is going to far outgain a simple interest loan. Or, said another way, compounding interest will ultimately grow exponentially, whereas simple interest will grow at a constant rate. And that's ultimately what we're looking at when we see the difference between simple and compounding interest.